Welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to follow up on my previous video on doing a uh, rainbow foil, <laughs> heat foil, I don't know what the, to call it, but uh, kind of a heat setting and rainbow creating effect of, uh, of a, uh, a heat gun on uh, metallic, uh, well, I don't know, metallic surfaces in general, but the foil in general here, okay? So I'm going to experiment a little bit with um, one of my celestial images, um, a cloud stamp, and we'll just go from there. Um, this is just kind of a general test of... Um, what can potentially be done on the surface. I, I've, I've heat set on um, kind of bare foil, you know, a little bit, but I'm going to try some black images on here too, just to see if that'll work um, and what, or what that'll look like if it does kind of start, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, uh, you know, what, what do you call um, kind of that, you know, color transitioning, um, I don't know, kind of heat effects. I don't know, we'll have to come up with some kind of term for that so we can kind of discuss it easily <laughs> in the future. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm doing some um, surface blocking out using white here, okay? And what it'll be is it'll be um, clouds coming from the top, from the bottom, and we'll have some kind of celestial image in between. I love doing those types of um, um, graphics visuals on my pieces. I don't know, I, I think it makes for kind of an evocative kind of nighttime type of scene like that, having that kind of, um, I don't know, it's, it's almost like a river of stars kind of, uh, I like doing it at a diagonal, I think it gives it a little bit of um, some additional kind of visual movement when you have things that slant like that. Okay, so we have um, some different choices here. We have our um, Spiral Galaxy, here's the Star Birth, uh, Milky Way, and Nebula with Star. Maybe the Star Birth would be good here. Um, anyone would work, though. So let's just give this a shot and see how it comes out. All right. This is the Kling Foam version of this. Now, what I'm curious to see is if I stamp this in black and if I kind of heat set it in there, if certain stars or whatnot will kind of foil, or I don't know, uh, color, colorize or whatever. And what that would look like, if it's going to be vibrant enough, you know, I know what it looks like on like a holographic, you know, rainbow effect. But if we can kind of create some kind of little bit of a holographic type of uh, rainbow effect on just plain foils, I think we have something there in terms of, you know, a formidable, I don't know, capability, maybe? Because the, the, the holographic foils, I mean, you can find them around, but just, it's a lot easier to find this just general kind of, you know, gold and silver foil than the holographics. Not that, it, you know, I see it as kind of a replacement for it, but... Um, it's a, great, it's a fantastic option if we want those colors in our pieces. Okay, so that is the um, starboard. Maybe the starboard might benefit from a little bit of a tone in there, too. So um, some blocking out. I, I can't block out too much because I, I need to have some bare foil um, showing. But let's get a little bit of um, uh, white on some of these stars in here. So it's not just uh, all kind of one um, value, okay, in that whole center section there. That's what I like about um, the foils. You, can, I don't know, they're very, they're very malleable, okay. You can kind of change them around with this type of technique right here. You don't have to have real smooth applications of color really by any means, by of, of media, in this case, um, pigment inks, okay? All right, so let's see, let's go in here like so. I'm kind of blotting off the edges. It's kind of a good technique to blot around the edges when you're doing your um, sky figures. 
just so you don't get too um, harsh of a rectangle shape. The rectangle is in there for a reason, but um, let's go in and soften that edge. So softer edges transition into the um, other impressions and the sibling designs a little bit more gracefully because you're removing ink so it stamps out lighter on the edges. Okay, and I'm overlapping, you know, probably by a half inch um, into my previous impression of that starboard. Now you have some of those stars kind of uh, illuminated a little bit in white. See it in there? See how that looks? All right, now we haven't stamped the cloud yet, so we'll do that. You can even just, I don't know, that even looks like a cloud up there. But when you're stamping the, you know, one of these images in black, um, it helps to have some other kind of uh, substantial textures in here to just, I don't know, to blend out that center image. My choice for that is the cloud cumulus, okay? Same thing goes. I'm wiping off a good half inch into this or so and pretty good around the edges like that, okay? So around the perimeter and I go into it this area a lot because I'm going to have this lighter area kind of going into my starbirth impression, okay? So you're just overlapping. I'm probably, that starbirth is going like about like that. That's like halfway into the stamp. In other words, don't do careful positioning, okay? Really overlap it good, okay? And then you get this right here, okay? See that? How that really overlaps into the image. Do you have to be careful about it? No, okay? Not at all. Careful lining up of edge to edge. That's like the opposite of what you want to do. It's a little bit more tedious and, you know, I don't know, it's just not very freeing. Okay, I'm going in less like this cloud is stamped like that. The next one I'm doing is like this, okay? So I'm overlapping my previous cloud and I'm overlapping into my star uh, birth, okay? See how that texture looks like that? No lines anywhere. Of course, we're working with a very busy, you know, surface here or loud in the form of that um, uh, gold foil. Okay, now see I stamped here, here, and then we had this space down here, and I just stamped it right over the top like that. Okay, now, the lighting is coming from above on this cloud, all right? So now we have the stars below these clouds up here, so I'm going to flip this around and stamp it that way, okay? Just re-ink it lot off that edge and just you know you know you can see it right there you can see those um, kind of billows like that right just remember which way you know to aim it if you make a mistake and go this way that's not going to be a game changer you just want to blot off enough on the bottom portion then if you're going to overlap it that way okay so again come right in here stamp it accordingly which is nice and loosely and you got it right there now don't go, you know, three inches on, you know, into the, you know, scene or something like that, you know, the imagery, but you can go, you know, there's a lot of leeway, in other words. See down here? I mean, I could stamp down there. You don't have to. I think it looks good as is, but might as well fill it in. It's only going to take another five seconds or something like that to get that extra impression in there. All right, so then you have your solar kind of uh, star gateway. I know it looks really, well, yeah, I guess you can see it okay there. It's hard to get to um, capture the uh, kind of essence. You know, you see my camera right there, but that's not what it looks like. It looks more like that. But now we have the glare of my camera in there. Okay, so let's go in and I know what this already looks like. I don't need to stamp out a scene like that, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm checking to see what um, heat setting will do to the surface now. I don't think it'll do anything around the clouds because the clouds are kind of, you know, somewhat opaque white ink. But the rainbowy type of things that I think I might be able to get will be in this open space where um, the pure, you know, gold foil um, is exposed.
exposed, okay? All right, so let's check it out. I expect some, you know, a lot of curling to happen on this, but we'll just counter um, curl it um, afterwards, okay? I'll heat set the, uh, the white a little bit too. see that curling starting to happen. Okay, let's go up into the star area. Boy, I really see that pigment ink dry. It's almost like it looks like when you're embossing. Okay, there goes that rainbow. When that ink is drying, it, it just goes like this, and it's like dry. It, the ink value going from kind of darker to lighter changes, but it looks pretty good on here, I think. All right, but look at this kind of rainbow pattern. Do you see this rainbow pattern down here? Look at that. Look at that up there. Now, I put it all the way around, but it did go into the clouds, even over the white. So the white, the, uh, the pigment ink white is reasonably opaque. I'm going to counter bend this to just to try to compensate. If I mount this on something, it'll, you know, kind of improve it. But all right, so that looks, I don't know, that looks pretty decent. I mean, look at this one right here. It goes like this. Um, I don't know if it's kind of just the amount of ink that was in that area, or if it was how I dried it, okay, but yeah, it's pretty interesting, I think. I think it makes for a pretty good, um, <laughs> effect or ability or whatever. This paper is so cheap, too. It's like 50 sheets for, I don't know, like 17 or 18 dollars. That's 200 of these cards right here, quarter page cards. Um, but if you can get that rainbow effect out of it too, that's pretty cool. I might go with, I might do that on some of my existing scenes that I stamped out, you know, already. Okay, let's check it for um, ink fastness, in other words, you know, where it's not kind of rubbing off. That is pretty well set. Now this is brilliance. I don't know if that's going to be indicative of, a, you know, like a Versifying Claire or something like that. It might. You know, I love that Claire. So if that works on here, that would be awesome. But someone said they, I don't know, someone said they tested a lot of different uh, media and, uh, you know, to just heat set it and everything worked. So I get, I didn't heat set long enough, I guess. Now, this is a little bit bowed, so you're going to have to, you know, I would mount it on something, and, you know, you want to get that nice and flat if it's on a card. I guess you don't have to do it too much, but... Okay, now, I think we can stamp, like, if I wanted to stamp some trees over the top of this, I probably could. Let's go ahead and test that out. Um, let's see if that is so. Oh, let's stamp some. Let's stamp some. Let's, let's try to get some bold, really bold... Um, Bruce large uh, impressions over it. You know, let's go kind of extreme. This is my choice for my um, kind of big, bold, really strong framing type of uh, image. All right, what's up and what's down? This way looks up and down to me, okay? All right, so let's go with the same ink. Now I'm just hoping this transfer's on here. 
I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't, but, uh, but I am stamping over some pretty thickly applied, albeit dry now, ink. So let's see, let's see if this transfers enough. Sometimes um, when you're stamping wet into wet, um, you know, it just doesn't transfer because it, you pull the stamp off and it works like a vacuum. It just pulls the um, ink right off. It looks not too bad. Now this is wet, so it's standing out um, bolder now, too. Um, and I think it will dry kind of with a dollar sheen to it. But we know we can heat set now, no problem. All right, now this black, or bold black against the background, let's see if it does anything in terms of um, kind of enhancing that rainbow effect on there. I know we are covering up some areas that we rainbowed. I guess that's the term I'm using for it now. Um, but having this black against you know, we're, you know, we're kind of losing some of it, but sometimes having something nice and bold next to it, look how, look how deep and, I don't know about you, but I, I think, I feel that looks holographic to me. I think those trees look like they're way, uh, you know, in front of the background. Now, like I said, these are wet, okay? So maybe if I heat set them, and they become that, you know, um, value of, like, gray instead of that. Uh, maybe it looks different, but right now that looks pretty awesome, I think. It's almost like a, yeah, it's like a, it's like I said, it's like a holographic um, look to it in terms of the visual depth. Okay, let's try something here. I think we could, I think I probably could have stamped those in white as well, and it would have stood out. I'm guessing, I'm not sure. It really stands out, white really stands up against um, gold. When I stamp things in gold, let's try the leafless pine stamp right here, too, just as a, I don't know, a bit of a, kind of a visual contrast here. Stamp it higher, stamp it lower, um, just for variation. Okay, I just dropped my block, which I didn't think we would need for this scene, but I think after stamping those trees, I think we could use Eagles right here. I have these tiny little eagles on uh, the deep space set here. Okay, let's go like this. Okay. I always like the, doing this pair of eagles together, kind of soaring together. I think it makes for a kind of majestic uh, visual. All right. Now I could add in some extra textures in here, like a white paint pen or something like that. But let's just kind of look at the. I don't think the I think the white paint pen would it would stand out against the background too much. Okay, it would look like it's. Right now, I think those stars and everything look like they're really set far back in this piece, like that. But I don't know. I'm into that. I'm into those colors right there, so. Um, I don't know. I think that's pretty interesting. I don't know. I, we went from this, okay. I mean, this looks totally different, doesn't it, you know, than that. Look at all this kind of variation in there that's happening. Look at all those colors. Look at that rainbow effect back in there. You know, underneath, I see greens and blues. Eh, yeah, you see oranges and reds like right in there. Look 
Okay, look at that blue right there. See that? So, <laughs> I don't know. This is, I think it's fun stuff. I, I love uh, kind of a, uh, I'm not the one who discovered this, but I love discovering new things in my own stamping and, you know, just kind of playing around with new techniques, right? But fun stuff. And I mean, that it makes for, this is like a really fast card. You know, I've just been diddle daddling around. This is 20 minutes into this. I think I could have done this in 10 minutes, you know, if I have everything ready and I know what I'm doing. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Fun with the heat gun, I guess, you know, on foil. Normally we're using that heat gun um, as a functional type of um, thing just to dry something, right, or heat something up for embossing. But not as like an, like an artist, like a paintbrush or something like that where we're going for, you know, different types of colors and whatnot. So, I don't know. It's a fun little tool to use. And uh, I don't know. I wonder if it, we could heat set from the back and if you, I wonder if it would do something. So you heat set it from the back like this and I wonder if we can see some changes happening. I don't know. But I, I don't know if I, I don't, I think on these, I don't know if I want to go too much more over the top of it, you know, and lose some of that. I don't know. These are experiments and I shouldn't worry about that. But I do like that look there. Look at that. Look at these bands like this. It's like ripples of those colors like that. You know, I have zero control and I don't know what I'm doing, you know, with that heat gun as far as like controlling um, the coloring like that. But I think even if you don't have any control <laughs> like me, um, you can still get some interesting looking results like that. As witnessed in this video. Okay, so anyways. If you have some foil, I'd recommend pulling it out and experimenting around with it with your heat gun, which I don't know most people have, unless I don't know people don't, you know, do heat setting and embossing at all anymore. But uh, hmm, I don't know. I can't stop looking at that. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.